Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You lead us to fullness of life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you will at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, 
and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hands of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but do not receive, because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord.
has called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him, and three days after his death the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying and were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house he began to ask them, what are you arguing out about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. And then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and servant of all. And then taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Oftentimes, the brevity and clarity with which our present Holy Father, Pope Francis, speaks have led people to be very much touched by his words and at the same time marveling of their simplicity. And yet, in a real way, I think this gospel applies to our Holy Father who comes to us with that simplicity of the child, the child who asks the question, when sometimes we just take it for granted. Or then when we ask, answer the question, they ask the more penetrating one. So why is there such poverty? Why are certain classes of people and groups of people pushed to the periphery? Why are they found to be difficult to deal with? Why would we rather not see them or not have them in our neighborhood? We know they have to be helped somewhere. And then that question would get an answer. Perhaps the answer would be, well, it's kind of human nature and it's the way it is and, well, we can't do everything. But then the child would ask the next question again that adults find annoying. Well, why? And that's what our Holy Father does. Why? Why? Why can't we move beyond the neglects of the past or the blindness or the uncomfortableness that would have us marginalize those who are vulnerable, those who are poor, those who are challenged by mental illness. Why? Truly, our Holy Father could echo the words of the Gospel's conclusion today as he visits us later this week. Whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. In the first reading today, we heard about the crowd's reaction, certain people within a crowd, to the one sent by God at the time of the prophets. What did they say? The reading began with it. Let us beset the just one. He's obnoxious to us. He sets himself against us. Ha! In other words, he's not just going to pat us on the head. He's making us look at things we would rather not see. Well, get ready. I have a feeling the message of our Holy Father will be obnoxious to the joint sessions of Congress. I have a feeling his message will, might be obnoxious to our president. I'm sure it'll be obnoxious to many people who want their faith to involve their Sunday mornings, but certainly not about other aspects of their life. However, Archbishop Romero, who was murdered because he continued to be the voice for justice and the downcast would say that a religion of Sunday Mass and unjust weeks is an abomination to the Lord. And so pray with me, brothers and sisters, that our Holy Father will be welcomed not only as some kind of celebrity for a historic visit, but that we will realize that who receives one such as this receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. 
Already there are stirrings of groups who plan to be present at various things so the Holy Father can see them and hear them. Let's pray for humility, that maybe, just maybe, we could put aside some of our agendas and actually first begin by listening. Listening to the one who proclaims truth. And truth, we know, is a person. Jesus explained that he is the way, that he is the truth, that he is the life. As our Holy Father comes, his presence among us will introduce the agenda for the upcoming year of mercy that begins in December. And as time unfolds, we'll see a variety of ways in which that year will be embraced. Our bishop has written to us a pastoral letter to all the faithful of our diocese in light of the Holy Father's visit, and even more so setting the agenda or the tone of our church as we move into the year of mercy. I wish to share some of it with you. He also lists various programs and plans, and those can be found in copies of the text that are available at the doors of the church. Bishop Peter writes, Brothers and sisters in Christ, I write to you today, and this was on September the 16th, on the feast of the beloved and venerable martyrs Cornelius and Cyprian, beloved because of their steadfast call for mercy in the face of great oppression and venerable because of their holiness of life and death. As we approach the beginning of the Holy Year of Mercy, called for by His Holiness Pope Francis, I want to recall with you that there was a time in our church's history when horrible and sometimes inhuman persecution threatened us as Christians. As an infant church during the reign of Nero until the time of Constantine, a span of approximately 250 years, anyone who was found to be Christian was liable to imprisonment, torture, and death. Imagine how many generations of Christians in 250 years knew nothing but fear, yet still they sought baptism and the promises of Christ. In spite of what they knew would happen, still they believed in Christ and in these neighbors called Christians who followed the shepherd of mercy. Jesus, crucified and risen from the dead. The stories of these heroes of our faith are many and inspiring. They are stories of a courage founded on love and faith in God's promise. We must be realistic, however, and know that there were many people who, though they wanted to be Christian, just couldn't withstand the persecutions. When called upon to declare whether or not they were followers of Jesus of Nazareth, called the Christ, they said publicly that they were not. To mark their denial, they most often had to pay homage to Caesar as a god and offer incense in his name or make some public declaration that they were not in fact Christian. So some, as a result of this, left the faith for good. But some, apparently a great number, if the persecution subsided for a time, wanted once again to be considered Christian. Known as lapsi in the language of the day, these lapsed Christians sought return and became the focus of serious contention in the church. Pope Cornelius appealed to sacred scripture and saw that the mercy of God favored the granting of forgiveness and the readmittance of these lapsed ones. In a fury, a bishop by the name of Novation became so adamant that these people had forever lost their baptismal grace for denying Christ that he set himself up as a pope in defiance of the true pope, St. Cornelius. Coming immediately to the true pope's defense, Cyprian, the bishop of Carthage, seconded Pope Cornelius in his call for mercy. In his younger days, he was a lawyer, and now as a brilliant theologian and writer, Cyprian wrote compellingly for the reconciliation of those who sought return through penance. In these days, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, is seeking out the lost sheep, the lapsed, the person who wants to come back but needs to find the way. Pope Francis, not unlike Pope Cornelius, appeals in sacred scripture as he calls us to this ministry with him, be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. The Holy Father recalls, I am sure, the difficulties faced by his early predecessor, but I'm sure too that he recalls St. Cyprian, the bishop who seconded the Pope's call. The Holy Father's calling of the extraordinary synod on the family, his attendance at the World Meeting of Families in Philadelphia, his coming synod on the family in Rome, and the proclaiming of a year of mercy are all very immediate signs of a healing ministry aimed at reconciliation of individuals and as a whole church in the body of the Christ in the world. As a parish and as a diocese, 
There will be various ways during the year of mercy that we will act upon this. We have already begun in our parish through the years that I have become pastor here an attempt called Let's Talk, where we invite people who for any reason have left the church, either were hurt or just fell away or have difficulties, to come, to let go of the baggage, to seek healing and wholeness. And there are many among us today, as well as involved in ministries today, who have returned to the Catholic faith. It began by strolling by our church and seeing the doors wide open. And then the Lord got to their heart. And then the open invitation led them to come home. These and many more other opportunities will be offered, but we as a community must make it our agenda to stretch the boundaries of those that we embrace, those that we wish to have feel at home. Not too long ago, someone was going to sit down in a seat in the church. They said, they noticed the people saw them but didn't seem to move. He said, would you mind if I sit here or should I look somewhere else? The person looked up and said, why don't you look somewhere else? Is that Corpus Christi Parish? Well, if we ever say such things or give such looks, we're the walking advertisement. And that's an advertisement that's wrong. There are people sometimes that it is difficult. There are those that we don't easily relate to. This weekend in our community, we're trying to raise awareness of those who struggle with mental illness. Oftentimes, those who care for them bear a heavy burden. Oftentimes, those who struggle with it feel isolated. And they feel very uncomfortable. And yet, in the past two years, our parish has tried to make strides to be more welcoming, to inform people. This weekend, you will see in the bulletin an entire list on the last page of all kinds of speakers who will come to broaden our understanding so that we can become more receptive. As you leave church today, there's material that you can pick up. Our pastoral associate, Carol, is going to be taking part in a walk sponsored by the National Alliance for Mental Illness Awareness. You can sponsor her in this 5K walk and help to promote programs that build bridges and understanding. Carol will be outside after Mass today. And whether it's in that area or the people that we find it hard personally to welcome, as we get ready for the year of mercy in December, as we hear this gospel in which Jesus says, if we welcome such people who seem insignificant or on the fringe, then we welcome not them, we welcome him. As we watch our Holy Father's example, this week will not simply be about big celebrations and major events, soup kitchens and prisons, little neighborhood parishes, groups of seminarians and religious, among whom will be our own seminarian Joe, and many other simple opportunities will characterize his visit. He's teaching by example. I pray that we will follow the teaching of our Holy Father this week, that we'll do everything we can through EWTN, through the internet, to be able to drink in, and that in the days ahead we will continue to digest the challenge that he will give. In conclusion, our bishop wraps it all up well in his letter, and so I share that with you as we prepare for this graced week, as we look forward to the year of mercy, and as we as a parish look to extend perhaps a greater welcome to those who come among us seeking or broken or in need. The bishop writes, my very dear people, the coming year of mercy is an opportunity to return to the Lord in a most conscious way. If we observe the true spirit of this opportunity, then not unlike the pardon that was won for all by Cornelius and Cyprian in the third century, the pardon that will be won for our own sins and the sins of others will live and be effective long beyond this 21st century. As the body of Christ in the world wounded by sin but restored to life through Christ's resurrection, we have every grace and blessing as a people and as a diocese to accomplish great things for God. St. Cyprian once wrote, God's merciful design has warned us that the day of our own struggle, our own contest, is at hand. If we don't believe that, then we're not reading the signs of the times. The day of our own struggle, of our own contest, as Christians, to stand up for what it means to be Christian, is at hand. Cyprian then wrote centuries ago, by that shared love which binds us closely together, we're doing all we can to exhort our congregation 
to give ourselves unceasingly to fasting, vigils, and prayers in common. These are the heavenly weapons which give us the strength to stand firm and endure. They are the spiritual defenses, the God-given armaments that protect us. Let us then remember one another. United in mind and heart, let us pray without ceasing. You for us, we for you. By the love we share, we shall thus relive the strain, relieve the strain of these great trials. Closing, our bishop says, in union with the Holy Father and with all of you, our very dear brothers and sisters, as we look forward to the great mission entrusted to us by our Holy pa Father, Pope Francis, I remain faithfully yours in Christ, most Reverend Peter Labashi, Bishop of Manchester. May this week's visit of the Holy Father fan the sparks into flames, and may this parish grow to become the bonfire that lets all know where Jesus Christ extends his arms here, calling those who are seeking on New Hampshire's seacoast, as long ago he walked a different seacoast and did the same. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Placing ourselves before the Lord with confidence, we bring our needs. For the church, may any competition among us be that in which we seek to be the first to serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For unity and charity to take root in our lives, individually and as a community. May jealousy, self-ambition, or gossip never weaken our witness as disciples of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing. May those who bear the cross of mental illness be lifted up by the care of others, the welcome of our community, and the peace that comes from knowing we are all beloved of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the families and friends of those living with mental illness, May they discover useful tools and experience loving support as they seek to bring hope and peace into the lives of those they love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs we bring here in our hearts today, for all who have asked the support of our prayers, and for all who have preceded us in death, especially Irene LaBelle, for whom this Holy Mass is offered. May all know the merciful embrace of our loving God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O oh Lord, that by the inspiration of your spirit, our efforts to be welcoming and healing might touch the hearts of those most in need. We pray especially the guidance and direction of your spirit upon our Holy Father in his mission to proclaim in word and deed what it means to be Christian, what it means to be Christ for one another. May this coming week find hearts, minds, and ears open and lives responsive to conversion. That Jesus Christ might be known and loved, he who lives forever and ever.
please join together in singing Transfigure Us, O Lord, number 509 in your hymnals. Transfigure us, O Lord, transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word, and where you lead will follow, transfigure us, O Lord. Down from the heights of glory into the depths below the love of god self-emptied the love of god to show you light the path before us the way that we must go transfigure us O lord transfigure us O chains that bind us speak your healing word and where you lead will follow transfigure us O lord light for those in darkness the hungry have their fill glad tidings for the humble the healing God's promise is fulfilled. Transfigure us, O Lord. Transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us. Speak your healing word. And where you lead will follow. Transfigure us, O Lord. shepherd for the sheep, a drink of living water for all who thirst and seek, and feasting at your table, the lowly and the weak. Transfigure us, O Lord, transfigure us, O chains that bind us speak your healing word and where you lead will follow transfigure us O lord pray brothers and sisters my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to god our almighty father See with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. So with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed 
indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we're gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread. He said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, he gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and offer you the bread of life and chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted, now and until the day of eternity, among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you've made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, and inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with saints Cornelius and Cyprian and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer each other a sign of peace. You have a very clear voice. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be you. This is the bread of life, this is the cup of joy, this is the table of abundant grace. Receive the gift of life, receive the gift of joy, for Christ is with us when we gather. This is the bread. 
of our hands when we gather in this place, giving all we can and all we have. When we gather in this place, we will leave behind all selfish ways. When we gather in this place, for Christ is truly present. As I mentioned, Carol is outside on the plaza with various uh, forms of information about mental health awareness. The bulletin has a listing. We also, as I've mentioned, have a resource library in St. James Church, right in the back of the church as you come in to your left. You're welcome to go in and use that anytime uh, during the day. The bulletin contains other opportunities and, uh, as I mentioned, that whole list of various speakers and awareness raising events that are coming um, throughout this month. And if you'd like to help sponsor Carol uh, to be able to uh, raise money for this great cause, she'll be going on that 5K walk on October 4th. You can get the information from her. And uh, we hope that your efforts, combined with hers, will bear much fruit. In the bulletin, you'll also notice that Bible study begins this week. The extended hour of adoration, extended hours of adoration on Thursday have begun and it was great to see some new people um, coming to adoration as well as coming to the closing. We have some enrichment nights coming up. We have a presentation on annulments coming up. There's all kinds of things so be sure to give the bulletin a real careful read. There's also an insert in this week's bulletin. Uh, each year we're asked to help support the retired priest fund 
and all that information and the means to do that uh, is enclosed in the bulletin once again. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those who renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth glorifying God with your life. Please join together in singing number 163, Three Days. Oh! 